I'll just show you something a little bit cool. Uh, so, so I've been dealing with uh, uh, time series data. Uh, basically data that is... Uh, I, I can show you. Okay, so, so, so I have, have a... I have, have some uh, example data stored here. Each data entry is by the hour. So this is one hour. To, you see, like that, it's simple. Now this could be anything. It, it could be a continuous time series, uh, like road, one minute or whatever. But say you wanted to partition the data into nice little partitions or segments or whatever you, you want to call them. Uh, I mean, in this case, it's OHLC data, which I, I do not recommend using this for backtesting, by the way. But yeah, the point is that it has a timestamp, right? So any data that has a timestamp, you can do this on. <coughs> and um, so, so, so you have, uh, so we want to partition this data here into, say, three hour or four hour. Like uh, the way you could do that is by, by using. I mean, I, I I never bothered actually implementing my own transducer before. I just used the built-in stuff in Clojure, but I decided to give it a go, and it was super easy and super fast. Uh, basically, okay, you need to align the time series somehow. So here I'm aligning it on the hour. Uh, yeah, something like this. Yeah, aligning it on the hour in case it's not aligned. The, the input data, the raw data, can be anything, right? Um, yeah, and, and I, I need to store some state. Like, what data has a gather? Ha, ha, have is it that I'm gathered up until now? Like, I need to store. Split the data into partitions, right? So that's what I'm doing here. And I need to be able to reason about when that I have a complete uh, partition. Like when's the next, when's the timestamp for, for the next, when I know I need to start a new partition in my series, right? It's a C, I make a sequence of uh, partitions <clears throat> with timestamps that are, are aligned. So that's really nice. Um, uh, you need some 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 basic kind of a little bit hard to understand, but you need a general framework to to create this. So you need to start with uh, need to read, need something like this, and you can store your state here. And here, this one is the key. This is a function that takes to it's you overload by. The parameter list right so you have zero arguments then you just call this if one argument then you do this and two arguments that's where you actually do the work mm. and here I check that okay do you have a complete partition uh, enough data to complete partition partition uh, if I do th then I am um, then I, yeah, ready things for a new partition, and I call this again XF result, and I create the partition with the aligned timestamp. If I don't have enough data to complete the current partition, then I add uh, the data point to the partition, and I keep going. A return result. And that, that's that's it. It looks a little bit complicated, and I, it kind of twists your mind a little bit when first time you see the thing. Like, what the hell is even going on here? With this weird, weird uh, thing here, I still haven't properly grasped it. I need to read through it one more time. But but actually testing it is 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 really nice. Um, uh, let's see if I can do this. So, and I want to. Okay, here I want to see Okay, I want to create a transducer, so that's partition. 
and I want to have it by the I mean this is seconds this is a little tiny function I created to convert our hours and other things to, to seconds so that then I have the tool I need and then I need to I'm not gonna reduce this right so I need to create I want to create a sequence and I want to base it on a transformation of a collection I mean XF is, is my transformation and my collection uh, input collection is this example data here remember this was one hour right but now it's going to come out as uh, let's take 10 here too like that let's see if this actually works yeah it works only problem now is that it doesn't print out very nicely so we can fix that by doing like this yes uh, I'm still pretty darn hard to read what's going on here you know uh, maybe I can like is this even possible like I do get time stamp like this is would, would that work yes it seems so yes so it's uh, it, it, it's it, two six ten fourteen eighteen so that's on the four hour right it's a little bit easier on that i re recall six hour look, looking kind of, kind of easier right so yeah zero six twelve eighteen Zero six twelve eighteen. It's twenty four hour clock, by the way. So, I mean, uh, this stuff is really cool. Uh, and uh, okay, so, so I have my little transformation function here. Basically, I created by calling this. Uh, 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 and what's perhaps darn amazing about this is that okay, I I I can also use channels, right? Right. Let me see if I remember how to actually do this. Uh, yeah, something like this. I can create a channel uh, buffer one or whatever, and then I can pass it my transformation function. So anything. Uh, let's see. Yes. Yeah, so anything. How does this work again? So any 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 data I send to this channel, like withdraw timestamps, it's gonna be ticks or whatever, will come out as partitioned correctly as six hour data, right? I think that's pretty darn uh, <laughs> pretty, darn, pretty darn cool. Let's see, can I actually make this thing print a little little bit nicer? It's just so ugly. No, oh, I, 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 I guess I can't. You know, it's just. I mean, it prints out all the the partition data here too, right? So, so this is gonna look like that. Law, object, 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 object. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's an array, right? It prints out an array and then the timestamp. The align timestamp of the data. Remember inside a partition the last entry it might it might not be have this time stamp like, like six or something it can be 545 or, or something like that right but that 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 turns out to be the last time stamp for that partition because the next entry is 605 right so this little snippet here deals with all that uh uh, nonsense I just threw this together right now so I, I, I'm not sure this is the best idea or, or the nicest thing I mean I, I this is a custom typing thing I use for arrays um, I mean uh, I, I, I'm guess, I guess it doesn't make sense that this is like a lazy sequence or you know anything like that I, I just can't see why but this would need to be anything else than the, than the most efficient and compressed uh, data I can imagine. Uh, 
which is why I uh, turn it into an array here. You know, I, the uh, I suppose the partition data itself, the sequence of partitions, th th these can be lazy depending on what sort of stuff I'm doing here. That's fine, but each entry and the data elements with or the data elements within that entry, I, I, these things don't need to be lazy as far as I can tell. So that that's why I'm using such horrible low level nonsense as, as an array here. So and the timestamp is because well that's a line timestamp, right? So mm. And uh, as I talked briefly in my previous video, this this metadata, well, for the latency, I calculate the mean, the mean latency of the partition, the elements in the partition, right? That's uh, the average latency is what I calculate here. I mean, I, I think maybe I could here I could like take an argument and uh, like I don't know calculation type or something I could calculate like the uh, yeah. maybe something crazy like the volume weighted uh, mean of the latency so I, 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 I focus more on high volume and when there's high volume and if there's if there is if there is high latency during high volume high amount of trading then 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 the average gets pulled up because of that right i can do something like that or i can get the highest latency or the lowest latency or the or, or some i can divide it into a histogram right and i can aggregate one of the tail ends like that and yeah anyway i, I can do something like that when i have a partition you know that, that's nice and and here i just I forward this to the first element in partition. The assumption here, of course, is that note I mean, uh, I, I think this is a reasonable assumption. Like, why the hell would you? Uh, why the hell would you mix? Would you mix these things? Like, why would you ever do that? I, I mean, uh, I mean, okay, if you do that, like in my trading system, I I, I do actually do that. Uh, in some cases, but okay, then you could you can split it up in two later. You can filter, okay, so you put a filter in front of the transducer of the two trans. You have two transducers there, and one for the one symbol and one for the other symbol. And uh, you you compose this with a filter, so you yeah, so all this kind of works out. Anyway, I just wanted to show this, I, I just think it's super nice, like. Seriously, you can use channels here and like whatever you want to use. I mean, okay, you don't like channels, Claudio Core async channels. You don't like those things. Fine, you can do something else. You can like it's very flexible, very. Uh, it's just very nice to get rid of. I mean, I, my old core here was like okay. I started. I remember started here in the old core. It started do, doing just maps and. Okay, I took a map as input and I got a map as uh, like like that and oh and then I've switched to you know I switched to Claude Core Async. Oh I so I, so I pass these channels in and I send from the in, get read from the input channel and I send to the output channel. That's all nice. But I mean being able to this can handle both. So I can okay if I have a file I can just read from a file and a lazy sequence uh, read from a file or a database or whatever and perhaps I don't want to use Chloric or async, uh, async channels for this, right? It doesn't make sense or to always use it. It's a little bit complex and stuff. It adds some complexity to, to, your, to your all your stuff, right? So, so, so then sequences are really nice and then you want to use maps and stuff, you know, lazy, lazy sequences. So this thing will work for any 
both cases, right? It's just fantastic. Let's see it again. Like you start with this and you end up with this. Like it's just super nice. You have one hour data. And remember, this could be any kind of data. It could be like tick data. So you have, uh, it's not aligned nicely here. It's just a big mess of data, but this is in sequence. You know? so that's sort of the assumption here that it is in sequence. I, I could probably, you know, add some state here that warns, uh, prints out some warning or something if the data I mean, doesn't isn't actually in sequence that that will be quite worrying in a sense so I could actually check for this here maybe maybe that's a nice thing to do here or maybe I should already check this somewhere else you know somewhere else in my systems should actually check this uh, or deal with it some some way or check uh, I don't think there's any good way to deal with that to be honest like you could add uh, like a 10 second buffer in time in real time and and rearrange your data if the exchange is a little shitty exchange that sends you out of order data and but you need it to be in order to actually understand what what's going on right so so you can add a window so you, you can actually answer add a transducer for doing that too and you can put them in you can compose them you have a transducer that deals with that problem first and then you compose that with the partition transducer later and uh, yeah then your partition transducer doesn't have to deal with that sort of horrible problem and so i mean it's it's something you only want to deal with one at one point you want, don't want to have like checks and uh, and asserts and stuff everywhere in your code you don't want to do that i, I think so but yeah anyway whatever this is just super nice i think th that's it for this video i just wanted to show this uh I might be doing actually something quite suboptimal here and not so nice. I don't know. I, I mean, I, of course, maybe it, this is probably not. This isn't thread safe, you know. But it seems that this is reasonable. Like, how how could you do this without storing state? I don't know. Maybe someone has some comments on this. Uh, I saw that the example code on the Clojure website, they used Volatile too, and they did comment on, on trend safety and stuff. And, uh, but I think that's, it's kind of, I mean, well, you wouldn't, you would use this thing here locally, and then you would throw it away. You wouldn't like put this in some big global place and that's reuse it everywhere. I mean, it's supposed to be used for one thing and then it sits there, right? It sits there and does that one thing. It's not something you pass around in your system and share, uh, you know, it's it's something you... I mean, that's, that's sort of the point. You can... you... It sits here and you return the sequence here to some other place. Like this here you can send around everywhere safely, right? result of the call to sequence you can share everywhere so, so yeah that, that, I, I think that's kind of nice uh, i think um, i have a limit on 100 so that sort of what actually how many ah what, what, why does that happen that's interesting Oh yeah, 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 I'm stupid. Yeah, of course that doesn't work. Um, yeah, I think I'm... No, not too bad. I was worried I might blow up my Emacs here now because... I, was, I suppose this might be eager or something like that. But we can try something like this and count here. How many? It's not too bad. 280. Anyway, whatever. I'm not sure why I was looking at that. Uh, okay, bye guys. Bye.